from District of Columbia Stadium in Washington, D.C., the All-Star Baseball Game. Good afternoon, baseball fans. This is Joe Garagiola welcoming you to the District of Columbia Stadium in the first All-Star Baseball Game of 1962. A beautiful day here in Washington. The temperature at noon, 78 degrees. Humidity, 41%. The wind, 9 miles per hour from the west-northwest. Although on the field, a real hot non-windy day let's put it that way the ball players complaining about it a high double deck stands here which really cuts off the wind and as far as the ball players weather report the infield the grass part really fast the outfield the ball was really scooting off the outfield grass and all the infielders going around warning each other to watch for the high sky not a cloud in the sky, which makes it for a little bit of a problem as far as pop flies are concerned. There are no little angels up there, the little white clouds that will help the ball player. And here come the ball players from the Cincinnati Reds, the manager and, of course, the manager of the National League All-Stars, Fred Hutchinson. Johnny Keane, manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, who will be coaching at third base for the National League All-Stars. And from the Mets, Casey Stengel. Casey Stengel. Casey will be coaching at first base and asking Casey about it. Casey said yes, and it's uphill. You'll have to decode that. Here comes Stan Musial now for the 19th year, a member of the National League All-Star team. Listen. Stan the man Musial for the 19th year, a member of the National League All-Star team. And now the starting lineup. Dick Grote, who will lead off and play shortstop from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Dick Grote. Batting second, it's Roberto Clemente from the Pittsburgh Pirates playing right field. Roberto Clemente batting second in right field. Familiar number 24 from the San Francisco Giants in center field, Willie Mays. Say hey, Willie. There's Orlando Cepeda, who will bat in the cleanup spot at first base from the San Francisco Giants. Orlando Cepeda. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, Tommy Davis in left field. Tom Davis. From the St. Louis Cardinals, Ken Boyer will be playing third base. Kenny Boyer batting sixth. Del Crandall, catcher from the Milwaukee Braves, a real comeback story. Out most of last year with the sore arm. He'll be batting seventh and catching Del Crandall from the Milwaukee Braves. Bill Mazeroski, who'll bat eighth and play second base from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Bill Mazeroski. And there's Don Drysdale. Real good sidearm fastball and a good sharp breaking curveball. Don Drysdale, the starting pitcher. Drysdale so far has won 15 and lost four. The National League squad, as you see him lined up along the third base line. Now the American League squad. There is Ralph Hauk, manager of the New York Yankees and the American League club. Ralph Hauk. The 
starting lineup, there is Rich Rollins, the amazing rookie from the Minnesota Twins, who will lead it off for the American League. Rich Rollins. Billy Moran from the Los Angeles Angels, who will bat second and play second base. Billy Moran. Roger Maris, who will bat third and play center field from the New York Yankees. Roger Maris. Mickey Mantle, an amazing story this year, who will play right field. Mickey Mantle, who will bat fourth. The shot of the two bombers, Maris and Mantle. Jim Gentile from the Baltimore Orioles will play first base. Jim Gentile. Leon Wagner of the Los Angeles Angels. Leon Wagner of the Los Angeles Angels, a real power hitter. Wagner. Left field. Here is Earl Batty, the catcher. Earl Batty from the Minnesota Twins, the catcher. And playing shortstop from the Chicago White Sox, number 11. Luis Aparicio from the Chicago White Sox, will bat eight. Aparicio. from the Detroit Tigers. Here's Bunning continuing to throw. Jim Bunning. Bunning, the starting pitcher. Been warming up for a good 10 minutes now. He'll be the starting pitcher for the American League. Jim Bunning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as Hail to the Chief has played, the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. The President, who will throw out the first ball. The photographer's having a field day. The President of the United States, Mr. John F. Kennedy. As the Commissioner of Baseball, Mr. Ford Frick to the President's left. Vice President Lyndon Johnson is right behind him. There is President of the American League, Mr. Joe Cronin. And now, our national anthem. from District of Columbia Stadium in Washington, D.C. There is a starting pitcher for the National League, Don Drysdale. A hot, humid, warm day here. A great day for baseball. Two great ball clubs, certainly picked by the players in both leagues starting pitchers Drysdale against Bunning 
And, and a familiar voice that we've heard many times on All-Star Broadcast to bring you the exciting play-by-play. -play. Here is Mel Allen. Hello there, everybody. Thank you very much, Joe Garagiola. I was just thinking, it is the first time that I have followed Joe Garagiola, who just followed the President of the United States. And Stan Musial. <laughs> and Stan Musial. We've got a pretty good uh, toss. Earl Batty, who will be back to the plate. Going over to get the um, president's autograph and talk to him. Just like any other fan and throwing it out again for the benefit of the photographers. The Midsummer Day's Dream. The stars of the American and National League. It's the 32nd All-Star Game. One of them ended in a tie last year, you'll remember. The American League has won 16, lost 14. The series began in 1933. They had no game in 45, uh, World War II year. And this is the fourth successive season. The two All-Star Games will be played. The American League got off to uh, a tremendous uh, margin in wins. But of late, the National League has been coming back. Now, at first base for the American League, Jim Gentile of the Baltimore Orioles. Billy Moran made a fine comeback after failing uh, somewhat in his start for the Cleveland Indians at uh, second base from the Angels. And at shortstop, the great Louis Aparicio of the Chicago White Sox. One of the great rookies of the season at third base, Rich Rollins of the Minnesota Twins. In left field, Leon Wagner of the Los Angeles Angels. In center field, Roger Maris of the New York Yankees. And in right field, you've got uh, Mickey Mantle. Back to the plate is Earl Batty, and doing the pitching is Jim Bunning. Jim Bunning, by the way, in his first full season, with the Detroit Tigers, made his first appearance in an all-star game and turned in a perfect performance in the innings that he worked. We're all set to go with Dick Grote leading off. Dick Grote of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Roberto Clemente on deck and Willie Mays to follow. Jim Bunning throws a lot of sidearm stuff. Dick Grote can hit to all fields, and they're playing him straight away. A wonderful leader. And the first pitch is outside, ball one. Looks like uh, Batty and Bunning were crossed up uh, right on the very first pitch. Of course, you come up with pretty simple signs, but uh, don't ever think that this is just another ball game. All the hoopla that goes before it, it's the outside pressures that tell you it's something different. Time is being called now while a brigade goes out to the bullpen out in left center field. There they go. Look like they've been left over from a track meet. <laughs> Both bullpens, Joe, are in left field. They have a dividing line, of course. Earlier in the year, they did not have uh, a shade uh, over the bullpen bench, but they do have now, of course. You see, that's a pretty good drive out there, Mel, 410 feet. Jim Bunning waiting. Now Dick Grove hitting 320 on the season with a count of one and nothing. Low and inside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Bunning with a season record of 9-4 and four with the Tigers. Gets that one in there, and it's a 2-1 count. Bunning throws a lot of sliders, but uh, just in talking to the other American League players, they'll tell you don't forget about his fastball. When he rears back and fires, he'll let you know something. Ground ball to short at Paricio. 
on to Gentile and one away as we get underway in the nation's capital in Metropolitan Stadium. Now coming up, Roberto Clemente of the Pittsburgh Pirates hitting 342 on the season. Clemente is a real hard swinger and knows no strike zone. He talks about uh, hitting a bad pitch. He's, Mr. Sisler has a good description. He's a good bad ball hitter, but a better good ball hitter. Strike one. Nothing won the count on Clemente. He'll hit to all fields. Curve is missed, uh, and he fooled him that time, didn't he, Joe? By the way, friends, this program is authorized under television rights granted by the Commission of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express consent of the commissioner is prohibited. No balls, two strikes, one out. There it is to the opposite field for a base hit. Mantle running over. Up for the ball. Clemente is going to go for two. Here's a beautiful throw, but it is off the bag, and it's a double for Clemente. The thing they say about Clemente, Mel, is that when a pitcher gets two strikes on him, that the pitcher's in a hole because he may try to waste one, and Clemente will hit it, and that's exactly what he just did. Now coming up is the great Willie Mays. Willie Mays of the San Francisco Giants hitting 304 on the season. But there's a fellow whose batting average doesn't uh, matter very much when you try to uh, evaluate him, Joe. No, he can beat you three different ways, with his glove, with his feet, and with his bat. He put on quite an exhibition in batting practice, and Willie's become pretty much of a first ball hitter. He doesn't weigh too much up there. That first good one, he'll rack it. It's in there, strike one. On deck is Orlando Cepeda, which gives uh, the National League All-Stars a pretty good one-two punch, as it does the Giants during the regular season. Curve outside, a 1-1 one -one count. There's no pitching around them. You pitch around Willie to get to Cepeda, you're really asking for it. One out, Clemente on second base. Foul back out of play. A one two count. Bunning many times will start the curveball behind the right hand hitter, hoping to catch that inside corner. It's in a pretty good spot right now. One ball and two strikes to show Willie a pretty good curveball. Curve is inside. Ball two, two, two. Roberto Clemente on second base, one out, a 2-2 count on Willie Mays. Mel, when was the last time you saw the center fielder straight away for Willie, directly in line with the bag? Defensively, they really play Willie straight away. You can see him right in line. They can't shade him either way. When Willie first came up, they played him pretty much to pull. There's a shot foul down the third baseline. I'll tell you one thing about Willie Mays. As far as all-star game competition is concerned, Clemente moving back to second. He has an all-star game lifetime average of 425. Having appeared in 11 games. Well, he cracked his bat and went over to get another one. Great clutch player. Clemente leading off second. One out, first inning. And it's high. Ball three. Three and two. Full count on Willie Mays. Clemente off second. And a foul ball down the third baseline, handled by third base coach 
Johnny Keene, manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. There's a pretty good reason why a fellow's win as many games as a bunning. A 3-2 count on Willie Mays. He threw something besides that fastball, which was, of course, that big, sharp, breaking curveball of bunnings. Baseball people will always say that if you can control something besides a fastball when you're behind the hitter, you're some pitcher. A high, high foul off first. Gentile drips over and makes the catch. That ball seemed to move away from him, Joe. A fastball. He hit off the end of the bat. Bunny's got a good live fastball. Now coming up is Orlando Cepeda. Orlando's got a habit, Mal, of getting that back foot set. He doesn't get it set until that pitcher starts going. He'll edge it back. And get right deep in that batter's box. One of the real good breaking ball hitters. He lays back for that ball, waits until the last minute, and then goes into it. In tremendous power. Cepeda hitting 309 during the regular season. There he goes. Look at that wide stance. Watch your back foot Spread. edge back. A little bit more. Outside, ball one. Cepeda during the regular season has driven in 68 runs. Let me double check that. 68 is right. Inside and high for a ball. Two balls, no strikes. On deck is Tommy Davis, Jim Bunning of the Detroit Tigers. Orlando Cepeda at the plate, Clemente on second. Two and one the count now on Cepeda. Remember Whitey Lockman's great story the first time he saw Cepeda, he told Bill Rigney, who was then managing the ball club, he was about three years away. And Rigney said, away from what? And Whitey Lockman said, from the Hall of Fame. <laughs> There's a high pop. Earl Batty under it and has it. And the side is retired. 